Wetlands globally are incredibly important to people and nature. Life thrives in wetlands, but what are they and how do peatlands differ? Wetlands are ecosystems in the landscape that are wet either permanently or for part of the year. This makes them distinct from other terrestrial ecosystems because they have their own plants and animals that are adapted to their special wet conditions. Peatlands, on the other hand, are a type of wetland which have soils that have very high levels of plant and animal organic matter. This organic matter is usually fully decomposed or sometimes well preserved because they are permanently wet and the oxygen cannot come in to break down this organic matter. We call this buildup of organic matter peat. Peat accumulates at very slow rates and our peatlands in South Africa are very old, ranging in age from 3,000 to 45,000 years old. Peatlands are more dramatically known for the mummification of a few human bodies, with an example being the Talon Man, who was one of Europe's most famed bog bodies. Peatlands cover approximately 3% of the Earth's surface. The global carbon stored in peat is estimated to be about 500 billion tonnes which is approximately 30% of the world's soil carbon. Peat also stores 10% of the world's fresh water. In South Africa, we know that our peatlands provide valuable ecosystem services to people. And they're able to do so because peatlands absorb water from the landscape as water moves through that system. In so doing, they mitigate the impacts of floods and flood water. They then act basically as a high quality carbon filter, purifying and filtering the water. They sequestrate, trap the carbon and store it, and they recharge the aquifer. Additionally, these systems are incredibly important for life, all life. And you can hear the birds, fish, amphibia such as uh, frogs, and in macroinvertebrata. So all of these translate into significant value to us as a society, to people, and especially vulnerable people that are so dependent for their livelihoods on these beautiful ecosystems. South Africa's peatlands in particular are peculiar as they probably shouldn't even exist here. With its relatively low rainfall and high temperatures and evaporation rates, there are few places in the country where there's enough water left over to form peatlands and to stop the breakdown of matter. Less than 10% of South Africa's wetlands are peatlands, and some are very unique. The Mfabeni Maya, for example, is 45,000 years old and is one of the oldest active peat accumulating wetlands in the world. What do we know about where our peatlands are? In 2001, an initiative started to try and map the peatlands of South Africa. And we've produced a peat probability map, which maps the groups of peatlands into different types, which we call peat ecoregions. We have over 635 known peatland points from samples across the country, which we use to produce this map. This map has an accuracy of 87%. Now before this map, we had relatively little idea of how many peatlands we had and where they occurred. We still need to do a lot of work to document them all. One example of peat ecoregion is the Southern Coastal Belt, which hosts the Onris Palmit peatland. It's a very unique peatland with peat layers about eight meters deep and it's dominated by the wetland plant called palmit, occurring in the Himmel and Arde Valley in the Western Cape. Now this valley is predominantly a farming community, which also includes the Camp Hill Special Needs Residential Facility. Though very unique, this wetland is at risk of being lost forever. Due to people using the landscape, we've transformed peatlands in the catchments that they occur in. What happens is they pass a point of no return, a critical threshold, and the peatlands can be lost permanently. One example is when a dam is built upstream of a peatland. This then cuts off the water supply of the peatland and the peat begins to dry out. The second example is when there's agriculture in the catchment. You can use groundwater or surface water, it takes away the water supply of the peatland, and again the peatland dries out. The third example is the invasion of alien trees, like your pines, blue gums and your bottle. 
They can also be planted as forestry next to a peatland, and because they use more water, the peatland dries out. All three of these examples were present at the Ormus peatland, and they combined to cause devastation. What happens is when these peatlands are deprived of water, the peat that was usually saturated becomes exposed to oxygen and begins to dry out. This results in carbon being released into the atmosphere. The drying out causes a weakness in the peatland, and when there's a rain event, can cause erosion. The nick point which forms can erode back throughout the peatland, draining it and lowering the water table, resulting in more of the peatland starting to dry out. This not only means that the peatland cannot act like a sponge anymore and no longer hold and clean water, it also makes a peatland vulnerable to peat fires. Peat fires are incredibly devastating. They are fires that occur underground and destroy peat that has taken millennia to form. It also smokes out the area and can sometimes burn for months. Let us look now at what happened in the Onrus peat fire. In January 2019, the Overstrand had three fires in our area. When myself and my colleague attended this fire and we got out of the car and stood next to the fire, we said to each other, this actually smells like the whiskey that I drink. And we immediately knew that it was a peat fire. It took us about four months to get the fire completely extinguished. It was so bad that we actually had to evacuate people um, at nearby farms because of the bad, uh, serious air quality. We've tried to rehabilitate the site um, thus far, but uh, we didn't, could not, couldn't find any entity that's actually been um, able to assist us with the rehabilitation. In 2019, this peatland behind me burned. And when peat burns, especially for a significant amount of time, it turns to ash and collapses. And when that happens, an erosion donga results. And we'd been fighting to have the donga rehabilitated to prevent further damage, but that never occurred. In 2023, we had the most severe storm that this area has ever experienced. And it washed away not just more of the peatland, but dramatically enlarged the erosion donga, extending it at least another kilometer and also eating into the healthy peatland. Very disheartening for us and my group of volunteers who've been monitoring the water depth in 16 points on that uh, peatland. All that area was washed away and we found chunks of peatland and palmy plants lying at the bottom of the Onrus River in the estuary, on the beach and in the sea next to the Onrus Beach. This loss is a devastating blow to the people of South Africa. We have lost a climate change mitigation machine as no more carbon will be stored there and huge amounts of carbon were released back to the atmosphere. It's a blow to the people living in the catchment as they will no longer benefit from the peatland as a sponge, cleaning water and storing it, protecting downstream bridges and other infrastructure. The peatland as a biodiversity oasis is lost. It can be very disheartening to see the damage that has been done to our peatland here. Once peat is, is gone, it's lost forever. We can't replace it. We can, of course, rehabilitate and allow nature to slowly build up the peat again. But once we lose our peat, it will take hundreds of thousands of years for nature to recover. So the big lesson is, let's not lose it in the first place. Prevention is better than cure. We need to urgently protect the peatlands that remain intact and we need to protect the bit that is still healthy in this system. And we can do the rehabilitation work if we all stand together, work together, collaborate and get the job done. So what can we do? If you want to get involved in peatland rehabilitation, please consider either donating money to the cause or volunteering your time at a local wetlands friends group or non-profit organization. Look out for World Wetland Day events near you in February each year and join in for biodiversity surveys or alien tree clearing. Or, if your local peatland doesn't have such a group, consider forming a WESA friends group yourself. We need everyone's help. For people to act as watchdogs to ensure that this degradation comes to a halt, and for rehabilitation of our peatlands to take place.
We are currently in the United Nations Decade on Ecosystem Restoration. There is no better time to rehabilitate our peatlands. Let's unite as South Africans to take good care of our ecosystems. We are stronger together.